What's crack lacking, Challenger? So my favorite animal is not my tortoise. It's not even one of my fish. It's actually his snails. Oh my gosh, he is literally on me. This is so weird. And I love snails so much, I even wrote a book on them. <laughs> Please do not call me crazy. So many people think that's so weird, but I think they're just so cool. Not only their looks, but also their genetics and where they're from and how there's so many different species of them. And I also think it's so cool that they have like their home on their back because they can like go anywhere. It's just awesome. <laughs> but there's this one type of aquatic snail that I honestly love and they're so insane, but I haven't had one for over a year. And then I was thinking more about that type of snail and I was like, they breed in a very interesting way. And I want to film that and try showing you guys and start a breeding project. And that snail, of course, is the mystery snail. Yeah! Yay! <laughs> and these snails breed in an insane way. Yeah, so that was one of their egg sacs. They basically lay it in the aquarium. Well, not in the aquarium. They lay it outside of the aquarium. And it's this little sack that holds hundreds of babies. And it's just awesome. <laughs> but moving on, I decided to go to the pet store earlier today. So here is that footage. Wap -ba. All right, challengers, this is the uh, third pet store that I've gone to because uh, I've been looking for mystery snails and apparently no one has them in stock. Even my local pet store, a chain pet store. So now I'm hitting up this one and hopefully they have it because uh, it's just annoying. I really want to get these mystery snails and... <sighs> All right, challengers, the package has been acquired and I have my mystery snails in here. So let's blast home. Yeah, so I eventually found them. I ended up going to three different pet stores and apparently they sold out, which is kind of weird. But the last one ended up having some and they're currently acclimating. Once I got home, I added them to this aquarium so that they'll start temperature acclimating and getting used to the fish tank so we can add them in quicker. So I ended up getting four blue mystery snails. And the reason I got blue ones was they were the only color that they had in bulk. And if there's one thing I've ever learned about breeding animals, it's the fact that the more you have of them, the more likely they are to breed. You can quote me on that. I mean, honestly, but also not really. So when it comes to snails and adding them to your aquariums, they're pretty hardy. They're not like most fish where you have to do like a drip acclimation or a cup acclimation. They're really quick and pretty hardy when you add them to your fish tank. I currently just have them in a temperature acclimation because I picked them up about an hour ago and the bag might have gotten a little bit colder since it's cold outside. So I'm just letting them warm up a little bit and get used to the aquarium before I add them in. Now you may be asking me, James, why are you getting mystery snails? Well, first of all, they're the largest aquarium species of snails that we can keep in the US and they get pretty big compared to like ram's horn or bladder snails. So that's the first reason and they just look really cool in the aquarium. And the second reason is they honestly help so much with the aquarium, whether it be maintenance or just cleaning up algae. So let's talk more about that over here. So I recently switched the light cycle on my 90 gallon aquarium and when I did that, a couple of the plants reacted to it in a bad way. Some of their leaves started to die and wilt, which is pretty unfortunate and the plants aren't the smartest things in the world. So if a plant has like two leaves, let's just say two leaves, one starts to die off and starts getting holes in it, the plant will start sending more nutrients to this leaf so that it can get healed and start doing better. Meanwhile, this other leaf that is perfectly healthy is still getting nutrients, but just not as much. And it takes a long time for this leaf to start to recover. So what some Aquarius do when their leaves start to die, they just remove them or pluck them out. And I could just go in there with my hands and a scissors and do that. But why do that when I can have snails do it for me? So mystery snails tend to eat the dying leaves, which is going to be great because they'll take care of that for me and I won't have to stick my hand in there. And the mystery snails will be fed and they'll do even better. If if you end up getting them, you also will want to add some algae wafers just because they do tend to eat a lot. And even if you had tons of algae, they still will want a snack. And this is the bag of the mystery snails. And there's four of them currently. Um, and they're just super cute. I mean, I didn't get the largest ones. They didn't have that much. And again, I went to three different pet stores and the last one was the only one that had these guys. They are super peaceful and super docile. So you don't have to worry about them fighting with any fish. I don't think snails can really fight fish. They tend to travel more at night. You wouldn't want to add these guys to aggressive tanks with fish. You wouldn't want to add them to like, I don't know, like an Oscar or a Gar or something or cichlids. I think they will do pretty well with just these angelfish. I've had them with angelfish in the past and this tank has so many leaves that it'll really block it. And if you're adding a lot of fish to the tank, try getting mid-level to top level fish just because they'll stay out of the way when the snails are on the bottom. All right, so for this aquarium, since we will be turning it into a breeding aquarium for these mystery snails, we do need to make some modifications to it. The first major thing is the top of the aquarium. We are going to have to build a lid that will keep them enclosed because because mystery snails, they lay their eggs outside of the water. So the water level is already pretty low, but they will lay the eggs on the side, sometimes on the lid. So we will need to add a lid. And when they go out, they can sometimes escape. And the last thing I want is some mystery snails escaping and getting in my fish room because they'll just dry up and die. And I don't want that to happen. So I'll be back in about five minutes while we let these guys acclimate a little bit more before I add them in. All right, challengers, I am ready to add these snails into the aquarium. So I do have this little tub right here. I'm gonna take the bag out, open it up, have the snails in this little container. We'll be able to 
pick them up one by one and add them into this aquarium. And make sure you stay tuned because I have some advice that I really need you guys to know if you ever decide to get snails. So stay tuned. Here we go. So the main reason I'm not adding this bag of water into this aquarium is because it is from a pet store and I don't know, they might've gotten a shipment of fish and they could be infected and I don't want to leave that nasty water in this fish tank for these guys. So by just adding the snails, it reduces a lot of the bacteria and risk when you're adding new things into your fish tank. All right, so we do only have four snails. Uh, hopefully that'll be enough for this breeding. I might eventually get some more in the future if I don't notice anything with them. All right, so here are the snails. I'm going to take them one by one and this water is warm. So the acclimation has been successful. So here's the shell, and oof, that's a beautiful little snail. I'm just tapping the hardness. Um, the snails feel pretty healthy. I don't see any weird growths. As you can see, buildup on that shell is very pristine, actually. So I'm hoping that these guys breed. So all I'm doing is just adding them in. Now, you'll see when I add them all in. Ooh, it's so cold. Oh, I hate doing this. I didn't even pull up my sleeve. Oh, no. So I'm just going to add them in. Oh, it's so cold. Okay. All right, so there's one. And here's the other one. I did see all four of them moving around in the bag. Um, when I picked them up from the store, one of them wasn't moving, but I still wanted to pick it up just in case. And the store did have like a return policy. So I wasn't too worried. So here's the next one. Eee. So all four of them are in. And as you noticed, uh, hopefully, I added all the snails to the aquarium having their foot or the bottom of their body facing downward. And that is super important. I do sell snails online and sometimes I get customer emails that, oh, my snail hasn't moved and it's been in the same spot for a couple days. And the thing is, if you add your snail upside down or at an angle and their foot or the bottom part of their body is not on the substrate, some snails lack the ability to turn themselves upright. So they can be stuck upside. Oh, oh, oh. A Gararoof is checking them out. Hopefully this guy will be okay with them. Um, it looks like the Coriodorus are checking them out as well, just because there's something new in the aquarium. But if they are left upside down and you don't make sure that their foot is on the bottom, they can possibly die because they're not going to be able to move and they'll just starve or other animals could get to them in your aquarium. So make sure when you're adding them, you add them the right side up or else it can be pretty bad. All right, challengers. So for the next couple of weeks, I'll be adding in algae wafers to help them eat. I'll also be adding these calcium tablets. And these things are great because snails require a lot of calcium when they're building their shells and developing. So by adding these little tablets, you can also add like cuddle bone or I think people add Tums because they contain a lot of calcium. But when you add these in, it'll help their shells develop and grow. So I'm just gonna throw a couple in. If you want some of those, check them out at wildpetsupply.com. And when it comes to snails, they tend to breed at different rates. Sometimes they'll start breeding almost instantly, or other times it may take months until you get the right water temperature and water parameters. In my case, I'm honestly hoping that I'll start to see some breeding activity over the next week. You can sex these snails, so you are able to tell their gender if they're a male or a female. The males have a little tube and they use that for breeding, and the females also tend to be a little bit larger than the males, so that's a that's an easy way to tell. Unfortunately, I was at the pet store and I'm still Still scrambling around with these guys so over the next couple days I'll try sexing them and figuring out how many males and how many females I have. I highly recommend you guys keeping mystery snails. I think they're such an awesome snail and sometimes overlooked. They can be very helpful for your aquarium and they also look really cute. Now most people recommend you keeping them in aquariums larger than five gallons and that's I guess what the book says. I personally recommend keeping them in anything over a 20 gallon aquarium just because they are really big snails and these guys like to travel a lot especially at night but not only their distance of traveling they also do go to the bathroom a lot. They require a lot of food and they create a lot of waste. So by having a larger volume size, it's a lot better on the system. And if you have a stronger filter, that's even better. These guys are not very particular on temperatures, but they do require a little bit of a higher pH. So make sure you keep that in mind when you're keeping these guys. I will catch you guys in the next video. Take it easy. Peace. Wapah.